Adam Tov, Zarim Tovim, and Lila Tov, no matter where you are at. This is Carrie, and I decided to not do a live stream today because the next section that I am going to be doing in Romans chapter 1 is another very long section. And because of the length, I am going to pre record it. It is my hope to do a premiere on YouTube so that I can actually be in the comment section participating while this is being viewed. But because it is long, uh, I want to be able to have the opportunity to record it, potentially even put timestamps in it in case people want to chunk it up into different segments because it is a very long verse. I think it is a very important verse, but it is a long verse. So this is the better way for me to do it because during a live stream when I am sharing, it takes a lot of energy out of me to be able to share this with you and to engage with you and your questions at the same time. So this way I'll be able to engage while the live while the premiere is going on, answer questions and not have to be sidetracked or have to give more of my energy other than what it takes to be able to dig these scriptures out for you. So hopefully that will be helpful. We'll see. Without further ado, let's get into the verse. We are going to be looking at my cheat sheet when we do this because it makes it a lot easier for me to be able to go back and forth instead of in the Peshitta itself. Uh, sometimes the highlighting of the letters are going to be difficult, but I think we can make it through just fine. So the verse that I'm looking at is Romans 123, and I'm going to be using Janet McGeer's translation as she did a lot more work with the, the Aramaic than Etheridge um, did. Anyway, I like her interpretation better. And they changed the magnificence of the incorruptible God into the likeness of the image of corruptible man and into the likeness of birds and of four-footed animals and of creeping things on earth. Notice that the word animals, Janet actually put it in parentheses here because she added that for grammatical purposes. So it would have read of birds and of four-footed and of creepy things, creeping things of the earth. Uh, it's always important to see these of what they've added because since it doesn't have anything to do with the scripture itself, it can change the entire meaning. And you'll see what I'm saying as we continue to move through this. Let's look at the first word here because this is huge, absolutely huge, especially what you are going to see that I have connected it to through other teachings that I've shared. The word here, uh, I put in parentheses as to part of what her translation and they changed, is the Hebrew word or the Aramaic word chalef. And the root is het, lamed, pe. And we can see that right here. And what we have added, so for those of you who haven't heard this before, for those of you who have, just hang on with me it's through inculcation purposes. Mother is on the prefix of the word. And so since Hebrew is read from right to left, mother would be on the prefix side, on the right side. And then father would be represented on the suffix side, on the left-hand side of the word. Mother teaches the divine masculine, and father teaches the divine feminine. So within this word right here, we have both mother and father represented. And we have the vav means to connect or to be pierced. And this is connecting to mother and connecting to father. So when we connect to mother, mother it's through humility and teachability. And when we connect to Father, it is now meekness, which is power under control and connecting to Him and the power that He brings forth. So now that we have that, this means connect to the Divine Masculine and the Divine Feminine within you. Because these scriptures, these sacred writings, when we get into the esoteric side, which just means hidden, given to the mature in spirit, uh, it is meant for those who have done the work and we have the word meaning to change, transmute, and alter. So the word that we're looking at here has to do with change, transmute, and alter. What is so profound in this 
is that this is the same word that we see used in Matthew 7, 2, or 17, 2, refer, referring to the referring to Yeshua on the Mount of Transfiguration. In fact, here are the first four words of this. And you can see the Kalaf right here. To change, transmute, and alter. Here's Yeshua before them and then the word light. So I'm going to show this to you in a minute a little bit down lower so you can see the translation. But I find it very, very, very interesting that on the front side, <laughs> if I can highlight it here, on the front side, on the mother's side, we can see that we have the Vav added, Olive Sheen, and Tav. So the Vav connecting, connecting to mother and humility and teachability, then we have the word for fire, Olive Sheen, and then Tav. And then the Sheen Tav means foundation. So this is the fiery foundation that changes and transmutes if we are humble and teachable and connect to mother's teaching. So again, I have shared before, and it again, I'm just sharing from what I have found, that Yeshua and the Holy Spirit are the representations of the seraphic messengers that were seen in the Old Testament, bringing forth the teaching of how we are to navigate through the system of duality as a foundation where we learn the golden rule so that we can be marked with Mother's Covenant having obtained her signature frequency that transforms us. And then we have Yeshua, and this is Kadam. This is also connecting us to Adam Kadmon. Um, and if you have seen Ken's teachings as he's been sharing about the compass in the East, so being transformed before them as the way it was in, ta in, ta in, in, in antiquity, power given, this is yod Hey. so this is a completed mother who is now on father's side. So we show the process at the beginning here, connecting, connecting to, <laughs> it won't let me highlight it, connecting to mother that transforms us, and then in completing the work as a completed mother, as father, as one who is now pierced and connected to father, having power under control while in their flesh and the yod hey being power revealed then we have in humility being revealed as light in the har and i find this also very fascinating that har is the word for mountain so when we think of the mount of transfiguration we literally have har here and nahar nun hey resh is the root of the word menorah, the lampstand that is within the holy place. Again, we need to be able to take these scriptures and apply it to us and what it's being shared with us <clears throat> as this is all a meta language to change us and making it personal to us as symbolic and metaphorical and analogies to help us to ascend. So what I wanted to share with you is here's the beginning of that. Transmuting and altering Jesus, Yeshua, before to shine, light, explain, and light. So this is really the illumination of what happened and explaining to them as he transformed into a being of light right before them. Pretty amazing, huh? I think it is. So we see that right here in this first word. It's also good to note that we have a couple other things that are hidden in here. We have the het lamed, which means uh, in the Aramaic as a root to dig, hollow out, cut and break, to wash, cleanse and purify, but also to profane and infringe. We must remember that these languages are in the system of duality. So dependent upon a person and how they see and what is in, on the inside of them, is going to reflect the way that they actually see these scriptures and when they are digging them out what they are saying to them because you can choose to enter into the left hand path first 
and instead of the right. But the right is what teaches us how to serve others and entering into light so that we can enter into the dark, a.k.a. the hidden teachings saved for the mature as those who have met the means of the golden rule on mother's side and frequency, which is exactly the foundation needed in order to change and transmute us. Otherwise, you will not be changed. So very, very important that we see this in the beginning. Uh, so we are digging out. What are we digging out? Het means life. It means uh, the fence to set apart those who are on the inside versus those who are the, on the outside. Those who have gone on the inside to find life as the root of this is Chava. Chava is Eve, the mother of all living, that leads us to the covenant of life through instruction. So the teachings of light, where we are to dig, that will help wash, cleanse and purify us, changing us from being profane, which just means common, into those who received revelation of the lifted languages, not the alpha bet meant to subjugate and control, but the Aleph Bayit Ivri, the language of the crossover that brings revelation. So you have the meekness and humility. Very important. Another thing that is hidden in here is the gematria of Palach, which means to cleave and to split. Interesting that we have cut and break, cleave and split, but it also means to plow and till the ground, to cultivate, to honor, revere, worship, and a peasant farmer. So, as all of these writings were actually written with agriculture in mind, because the Hebrew people, that's what they did. That's why all of these analogies relate to, like, farming. And so, when we're talking about plowing the ground or tilling the ground, the fallow ground that is meant, uh, that is within us, within our heart, and to cultivate that which will produce honor and it is a measure of revering, which revering is a strong respect for the process that changes us and alters us. Now moving on, we have the word for praise, glory, magnificence. So Janet Magira was talking about changing the trends or the magnificence of Aloha. But again, if you don't have the key to read the codes, which would have been the oral tradition, you would be missing a whole lot of what is being shared here. So the root of this is Sheen Bet Het. And we have a Vav that has been added on the inside. So if we just look at that, this is one who has had their heart pierced, which means when we were looking at plowing the ground to cultivate it, this allowed the plow to come forth in the heart so that seed could be planted. This also means that we are connecting to our creator source within us. So again, you have yod heh vav -Heh as a representation of mother and father, the God of this world, which is really the pre-incarnate Yeshua and the Sophia, the Holy Spirit, that are the gods of this world. And then you have source, father, all father that is above, the creator of all. This is connecting to that place within because we have connecting to mother and to father. So again, the divine feminine and the divine masculine. So the divine feminine, which would be the yod -Hey, and then the vav -Hey on the suffix side. So these tavs mean mark, sign, fingerprint, signature of the covenant of mother and the covenant of father and they will be revealed. So this is the process of transmuting us and being revealed by first we had to connect to mother and father, then we had to be marked in their covenants. And there's several things that we see within this, but one thing I want to point out um, right off the get-go, so there's magnificence and glory that is given to those who have the covenant. Because again, here's the root, Sheen Bet Het. All these other letters have meaning, meanings, and the translators would leave those out, not knowing that there was significance to them. Sheen Bet is Shuv, which means to turn. It's part of it meaning to sit down, specifically as a judge, 
and we've talked about self-adjudication before, that we are not judging others, we are judging ourselves in the process of becoming the marks of mother and of father. And we can see that it means to dwell and to remain, to settle and to marry. So we are talking about the ancient Hebrew and Aramaic wedding where the two shall become one, the divine feminine and the divine masculine. And you can see those covenants both being completed here. Meaning exempt from judgment because you did self-adjudication to make sure that you would match that frequency of mark and of mother and father as one who is revealed having done the work. So shuv is also a word meaning to repent, to change, to turn. And what are we doing? Well, it's the consuming fire that helps us to turn in order to build through the 222, the two paths of the 22 letters of Hebrew and Aramaic that help us to build love where we connect in our heart to this process where we find life. We find chava, life that was taken out of mankind, the mother of all living, making us as the living. That is so incredible. So when we look at the actual root of this, there's so much that's hidden here. The root being shin bertret means praise, commend, glorify, give, the, give glory, give thanks, offer praise in the process of our turning. Shin bet by itself also means, as I did a typo here, in Aramaic, to let down, lower, descend, or come down. So this is a magnificence or a splendor or a glory that is coming down as those who have turned. This is really important when we consider, when we have talked about going up the mountain of mother and the going up the mountain of father of those who would come down in glory. Now, we have shakab in here as well. So when you look at the root, so in Gematria, every letter has a number total. So every Hebrew word or Aramaic word that has the same Gematria total is connected to this word. So within the root, we have Shin Chet Bet. So here's the Shin, here's the Het, and here is the Bet. So this word means to praise Lod. It improved, was raised in value, he prays, lauded, or lauded, glorified, commended, congratulated, to still calm, smooth, and appease, praise, improvement, and betterment, excellence, superiority, advantage, and a choice part. That is fascinating, considering we're talking about changing and transmuting. Then we have... Um, so that's, that is within this word as well. So both of these covenants, since they've been added, it is showing that those will be revealed that have made an improvement, a betterment to themselves. They've stilled themselves, they've calmed and soothed themselves, which would make sense because you wouldn't be wrestling the beast ego any longer because that has been tamed and soothed. And it's really meant for those to be congratulated because of the work that they've done. Now we're moving into God. So we have a Dalit added in front of this, and it's always fascinating to see the Dalit added in front of anything. So with the Dalit added on the prefix, we know that this is the process, so it's saying for us to transmute and change ourselves into God. Again, this is a message given to the mature, not the spiritually immature, but those who are already of the bride status that are going into the maturation of becoming one with God, just like Yeshua did, I and my Father are one. Because the door has been added, the Dalit, it is meant to those who are lean, weak, and feeble, that they enter into the door of this revelation as Mother is presenting this and opening this up to them to reveal that which is weak and feeble on the inside so they can deliver themselves of it. Because part of God, and this is this is the difficulty of talking to those that may still be in the spiritual immaturity status, because when we see the word God when we're young, so between spiritual adolescence of the age of 0 to 12, 
God is referred to on the outside as one that we have a strong reverence for, uh, a deep respect for on the outside. But when you are increased in your learning, in your maturation, you understand that this door is being opened to the inside of you to reveal that you are God on the inside. God just means strong leader teaching shepherd that has a staff of authority. And in this, the way this is written, we have the spirit breath on here. So again, this can only be revealed to you through spirit. If you are not ready for these teachings, then you would not be able to receive the words that are being shared because that lets you know that you're still in the place of spiritual immaturity and there is nothing wrong with that. I'm not judging that. I was once there as well, but in coming up a little higher, I've been able to see through the languages that which is being revealed to us to take us on the inward journey because the kingdom is within and we must go through the door of the inward man to have this revealed. So the hey Aleph is a spiritual breath because the root of this word is Aleph Lamed He in Aramaic. In Hebrew, it's just El. So this is a shortened form, um, shortened from Ayil, but it is in the Hebrew, it is El that has been revealed, God that has been revealed, a strong leader teaching shepherd that has the staff authority that has been revealed. And since El is a shortened form of Aiel, and we know it's the word meaning strength and mighty, when we trace this down, I've done this before, but if this is the first time you've seen this, you might want to see the making of the word God. So Aiel is the same word. It means strength again, anything strong, specifically a chief politically, or a ram from his strength, a pilaster, which is an idiom for a priest as a strong support, or an oak tree or any strong tree. It is interesting to note that the oak tree has the deepest tap root, so it will search down deep in the soil for water. And that's why it's such a strong tree, because it has a deep, deep tap root. It comes from the word ul, which means to twist, and think of DNA here, to be strong and being rolled together as powerful as the body. So, in looking at this, the strong body who is one who has been pierced within their heart, connecting to their heart, that becomes a strong leader connected in their heart, teaching shepherd that has the staff of authority. Then through that process, they are given the power within. So the shortened form is God in a static form, but then it is being revealed, and in the Aramaic, having the Aleph added, we can see the divine feminine and the divine masculine being present here all at once through the spirit breath, as the hay is the exhalation and the olive is the inhalation, and this is a this is one of those uh, lo and behold, the revealing of those who entered into the inward man and revealed the divinity that is within them. So again, you can see how this is progressing, and you can see how without having those additional letters how much this would have been morphed and changed from the original meaning. Especially when we're talking about this has to do with improving and having excellence and improvement and betterment, superiority and advantage, because you know who you are. But we must enter into the door through Mother's teachings first. Hence why Yeshua came in the form of Mother to fulfill the mandate of the Divine Masculine in order to reveal the Divine Feminine to us. So when we have the word not, we can see that the Dalit has been added. And again, and in Scripture, there's really no or never a word for no or not. It just means that if this is coming against you as being um, adversarial, it means that you need instruction in the way of one. And since we have the Dalit added, again, Mother is the door of the revelation to open this up to you, so you can be instructed in the way of oneness, the Christ anointing, the Mashiach as one who has been taught, who will turn and teach, one who is yoked and tamed their beast ego nature, is associated to as family of God, carries the thousandfold anointing, which is the Mashiach the Christ anointing, who was once Dal, who once was weak or thin, 
and it was a dangling, because again, we are to bring, quote-unquote, heaven to earth, because heaven is a higher state of consciousness, and we are to be the conduits to acre that into the earth. So this is instructions to those who were once weak or thin, leady, lean, needy, as a poor man, as the weaker. So it's interesting because when we use the word Elohim here, made you lesser than Elohim, let's take a look at another scripture that will help us here. So in pulling up Psalm 8, 5, we can see this. For you have made him a little lower than angels. Well, the word for angel would be malach, but it's actually the word Elohim. And it's interesting that we have the mem added in front of it, meaning the Elohim entered in through the waters of chaos. And making lower means to be lacking or have need. Well, of course, we have lacking our need when we enter into the waters of chaos because we forget and forgot who we are. And the reason why we have a little is means that few find this, few realize this, because when we enter into the waters of chaos, we are going to, uh, we have to see the wrestle, the struggle in having it revealed to us as being the Elohim. So it's a very important scripture for us to keep in mind in referring to what we've been but we've been looking at at this so lesser than elohim means that we are weaker and we are needy because we need the instruction necessary to understand that we are as one and again connecting that to the word alaha delaha above that through our instructions we learn who we are. That's a huge, huge connection. Then we have the word corruptible, and I find it, again, fascinating to see what is added because chet bet lamed means corruptible. So we have death here that's been added when it's life. The reason why it's corruptible is because it's life that is given as the inside authority, but bet lamed is another word for heart, which means anxious, an anxious heart, fearful, and terror. So one that has been terrorized, a fearful heart, because on the inside there's authority coming from the fear. So really this is a heart that has been ruled by the beast ego that is operating in fear. They're meant to have life, but the fear is what is corrupting them. And then we have death that is added. So death that has been added to one who is meant to be living, but has been corrupted because on the inside, their authority is coming from the ego, the beast ego that controls them through fear and intimidation. One who has a very anxious heart and is afraid of everything. But again, the resolve always, 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 always comes from the letters themselves. So first, let's go a little bit deeper into what this is saying. Because again, in the sense of duality, as this language is a dual nature, both sides are apparent together. And what do we have here? Well, we have corrupt, destroy, alter, defile, and distort. But we also have labor in childbirth. So birthing something new, which makes sense because we have the waters of chaos connected to mother and of course when a child is born the water must break so the child can come forth so again this is a huge thing that you know we're entering into death but we need to find life to build ourselves on the inside through the teachings that will come through the 222 path the two paths of the 22 letters the hebrew and the aramaic that will then be the authority on the inside so that we can tame the beast ego instead of having it be the authority on the inside. So unless we go through these process of teachings, the beast ego causes us to act corruptly. It will ruin and destroy us. Um, so past tense, corrupted and ruined. Look at this. It means to be wounded and damaged. So when we allow the beast ego to control us 
and be the authority on the inside of us, it means that we can cause damage. We can be injured and we can injure other people. So, and also as a pledge to bind by taking a pledge. So there's even English verses that I will break the covenant of death that you have. Well, look at that right there. <laughs> there's death that with the beast ego controlling you, separating you because of it, that it will bind you. But how interesting that in birthing, as we are birthing ourselves to become the new man, there's writhing and travailing and conceiving and bearing. And we have birth pangs and throes of birth. Connect that to other verses that you know that we are in the birth pangs right now. Because there is a measuring line that we need to be meeting, a measured portion. Because those who are continued to be in the beast ego That's not supposed to be hose. Sorry, typo. He, the occupation is to destroy. The beast ego, is, the whole thing about that is the occupation is to destroy. So this also means woe and alas. So if we do not deal with our beast ego, which is the authority on the inside having authority over us, it will cause us to be ruined, and we will have died in the weakness of death. But we are meant to be birthed anew through the chaos. So the resolve is this. Go through Mother's teaching, because Father is hidden behind. Meet her measurement, her measured portion, so you can be marked in her covenant, so that you can find life, Chava, that was removed from mankind so that the authority can be changed on the inside by building your spiritual temple through the teachings of light, the teaching shepherd that comes, and the language of light that instructs you. So this is a resolve to that. And yeah, we are definitely in the time of the birth pangs, and we should be going through these teachings as the Spirit reveals them to you. So then we have the word form, image, similitude, type, exemplar, pattern, likeness, appearance, and manner. And it's Dhamma. Dalit Mem, Aleph, is the root. And it means, I put this in here, that it's building the blood, because that's Bet, Dalit Mem, and we know that through previous teachings that life and light is literally in our blood. Our blood is congealed light, which is just fascinating to no end to think about that. So we're building our blood in the likeness because again, we were slowed down from vessels of light entering into our own creation where we entered in through our flesh suits where the light within us was then congealed as blood. Hence why those who are not of the light take the blood of those who are, because it is our blood contains energy and form of light that they need to sustain themselves. So when we look at this, it's the likeness too. But this is what I find fascinating. If Dhamma is the root, we now have Vav Tav. This is connecting to Source Creator, on the inside and being marked with the covenant of Source Creator. So remember we were looking at the process before. We had the Tav of Mother, yod and the Tav of Father, vav -He. Now this is the covenant of the Father, all Source, as the addition covenant being marked with the signature of all Father, Source Creator. How incredible to see that that is on the inside now. And so when we look in building in the likeness to, building us in the likeness to of the source and creator, but we must be connected to mother first and be humble and teachable. So 
in the root of Hebrew, the divine masculine, Dalet Mem He, because the Aleph and He are interchangeable, it means to be equal in value, to be in the likeness and resembled, comparing, believing and imagining and likening, seemed it appeared. And then on the other side, in duality, ceasing and stopping, ceased, stopped, dummy and silence. So you can see that these root words, especially within Hebrew, have much to do with duality because we're in when we are in the lesser maturation stage from 0 to 12 this is when we need to know this or that where discernment really has part of is in the lower state of maturation in comparisons of this or that but again this is the importance of building ourselves in the likeness of and it's through the spiritual path by entering in the door that reveals our weak and feeble position to go through the teachings, the living water teachings of mother and father so we can connect in our heart, be marked with the covenant signature frequency and fingerprint of all source, all father creator in the oneness unity. Moving on. This is the word meaning to form, form, or molded. You've heard me say before about a lump of clay. A lump of clay is meant to be worked by a master potter who uses the wheel of time to shape, shape and form something that was without form and was w void. So think of Tohu Bohu in Genesis chapter 1. The world was formless and void. Well, we are formless and void, and we must be made, and formed, and molded. So again, this is very different than what was translated in English. So when we take a look, Zalama is the root of in Aramaic, but again, we have the door added to the front. Mother, you must go through the door of the Revelation to deliver you from your weak and feeble position where you are lean where you are going to hunt and chase on the spiritual path that which you desire the instructions that will help you through the waters of chaos to find the waters of shalom mother and father in order for you to be in the oneness unified quantum field the Christ anointing which is seeking after the hundredfold measure. Think about the parable of the seed, the thirty, sixty, and hundred, because ma mem aleph is of the hundredfold measure. And the hidden word that we see here is the zadi lamed, meaning shadow and shade, shelter and protection. So when we look at this, this is also talking about doing our shadow work, going in and taking a look at the things that are hidden within us taking a look at the things that make us good and evil, the light and the dark, and being able to, think of the first word, transmute, alter, and change them so that we carry the hundredfold measure and initiate into the Christ, the Mashiach anointing that lays dormant. Again, this is not a lump of clay here. This is something that is now from the static position into a kinetic position, meaning that it is being formed, molded, formed and molded. Hope you guys are connecting to that, but it also letting us know that we must do our shadow work. We cannot resist those things within us. We must deal with our own shadow and alter and transmute them in accepting, realizing that they are there and learning from them through wisdom the potentiality of the light and dark within, unifying them into the oneness principle. Moving on, translated as human, this is also as it was left out. This is Barnasha, which means man, mankind, son of man, or as they would say, the capital S and capital man, son of man. We all have the potential of being the son of man. And when you see where this is coming from, Anash 
in its root means to be weak, to be sick, feeble, but it also means to humanize. So, to humanize us, as we have forgotten that we were Elohim in entering in, we've become weak and feeble and sick because we don't remember who we are and we've been humanized because we've been put in flesh form. But look at this. This is very incredible. Just to let you know, Nasha, many times, when the word would be used for wife or woman, and it should be, Aleph, Nun Nun Tav Aleph, which by itself is really fascinating. That is a teaching for another day. Many times they just substituted Nasha in it. This is a root. This is a Hebrew root with the frequency of the letters that means to lift up, to lift. And when you see to lift mankind up, what do we have added on front of it? That which isn't highlighted, which is debar. I will highlight it now. Debar, speaking, speech, word. The word that is meant to lift up mankind and humanity. Stipulated and agreed to follow behind someone's back to drive. So the word that is meant to drive us from behind has to do with the shepherd, with the teaching, the uh, staff of authority that is meant to goad, prick, urge us on through the word. It could also mean pestilence, plague, and pasture. So think about the time that we live in as well with C19 of what they have been promoting. See how it's connected to the book of Revelation in English. This is a very amazing time for us to live in. But what we are trying to share with you is the deeper hidden side of what we do not see that was never translated into the English language, the alpha that meant to subjugate you, instead of the aramic, arumic, elevated to exalt you, no longer as being a subjugated, but one who is a sovereign that will be lifted up through the word, the sacred writings. Now look at the word bar. Betresh is also in here, and it means to purify as grain. And we've talked about this because even in this word grain, it means one that is winnowed, not threshed. We're talking about the barley bride here, one that is being purified, that is cleanless, that is the beloved, pure, clean, and empty, emptying out the things of this world so that they could be filled with a spiritual path that is meant to raise them up through the word that brings them life. So again, we have also Dalit Bet, which means Dobe, Mother Bear, that is the gatekeeper that is meant to hold us back until we have made ourselves as the beloved is pure, clean, and empty that has been winnowed through the spirit. So again, winnowed versus threshed means being tossed up to in the air to separate the berries from the chaff. And air is ruach, which is also the word for spirit. This also means an heir apparent to throne the throne. So, an heir apparent to throne, we are then speaking of sovereignty. Melchi, Zedek, Zadik, kings and queens of righteousness that have been given power from the Father. Because they've gone through this process. They are no longer weak and feeble. They have been lifted up by the word that has purified them and so that they could be selected. And look, having said that, we then go back to Chabal, to corrupt, destroy, and alter. But again, with the door being here, this is now the door that is going to destroy death. This is incredible to see this. There's a measuring line and a measuring portion, and you can see this by going through the word. And again, I'm not talking about the English lesser narrative. I'm talking about the Hebrew and the Aramic, Aramaic, Arumic, the one teaching that exalts you, the power that is given by Father for those who empty their cup, that this door, by entering into Mother, she is going to help destroy death so that you can find life 
and build yourself through the instructions. Then we have the same word that we saw before in the likeness of. There's no need for me to go through that again. But then we move on to the bird and flying creatures. This is amazing as well when you can see what is in here. So looking at bird and flying creature, what is it saying here? Well, I think it's very interesting that the root, so what is written here has been defined in this column of bird and flying creature. But when we look at the root, which is peresh het, not only does it mean to fly and squander, but it means it blossomed. So if you can connect this to what we have shared before with the scent of the rose, I'll put a link in the description box or actually on the video itself. This is huge to see about being blo blossomed. And the Hebrew root parach with the same spelling means to be open, set only of the eyes and the ears to free. So if we are discussing eyes to see and ears to hear, this is opening and blossoming. He opened and uncovered. Again, uncovered is gala, which is connected to giliana, which is the Aramaic word for revelation, the book of revelation of uncovering that which was covered and hidden, kept away from us, how to receive the Mashiach, the Christ anointing, because it lays dormant in every single one of us. It also means he guarded and watched and to supervise, to become clever and wise and was guarded, was watched, supervised, was open and covered, seeing, one who can see, hearing, one who can hear, one possession of all faculties, as clever, intelligent. Clever and intelligent, you know, that that can be connected to so many things, especially the seraphim messenger, translated as serpent, but really the burning one, which was a pre-incarnate Yeshua, Sophia, yod heh vav -He, that were teaching Adam, mankind, to find Chava, life, while in the garden. And the garden is us. Gan, that's why it's Gimel Nun. It's the gathering and the assembling of the teachings while we are in the Nun, the fallen flesh suit. We are the garden. So in looking at this, so in blossoming, what caused this to become uh, so that we can fly? It's interesting because... I know that even uh, in looking at some of the things that have been shared by Jace, Jacob Shirka, he says, together we fly. Well, flying and blossoming, I can see this right here from this word. Let's also look at something that is very important to see. The peiresh is connected to quite a few things. In Hebrew, it can mean bull, bullock, or steer, but when you look at the pictograph form of the Hebrew letter as the ox head, this is connected to the Aleph. And it also means through, across, over, and beyond. So think of the word Eber, Ebru, which means to cross over. And that is what really the word Meta means, hence why we are teaching and sharing Metaology. If you guys have seen that video on our YouTube channel. I could probably even put show this on here, put a link. But it is also contracted for the root, the word meaning fruit, peresh. And when we look at peresh in its full, para, it's peresh, instead of a hay, peresh aleph, to bear fruit, to be fruitful, and a desert dweller. So think about being pulled into the wilderness of the people, into the desert, where you learn to speak. Bed midbar. I'm not going to go into that, but those of you who know Hebrew know that word and know what I'm saying, because it does have a connection to debar, which we shared from above. So what do we have added? Again, we have the dalit once again. The door entering in to show us our weak and feeble place. 
uh, within so we can del deliver ourselves of it. The languages that are elevated, not the alif, are the uh, alphabet, which is subjugating you, but the alif bayit ivri, uh, as ivri means the crossed over language, connect it with this. Um, that raises us from being poor and destitute to being first fruit leaders that find life, that find chava and then are marked, given power on the inside of us, marked with a covenant that changes our frequency, that of the Father, where we then are marked externally, inside as well as outside, with a covenant exempting us from judgment because we no longer judge. That means we have self-adjudicated it doesn't mean that we never judge because, of course, you have to judge your actions so you can learn from them. But we no longer judge because we've entered into the unified field of oneness where we are no longer in the system of duality as this or that. So again, this is a word that is meant for those who have blossomed out of the system of duality, who have found life and the covenant in the oneness that are uh, have been opened up, that have been uncovered, that... Um, are wise, and clever, and intelligent, and can be supervisors and inspectors because we've gone the way and we can see not only the fruit that our life has has uh, come forth with, but other people that have fruit as well, as it should be evident in our lives and be seen that way. I do find it pretty interesting that Resh Aleph, between the Resh Aleph, which means to see, and I think it's funny again, so opening of the eyes and ears, we actually have life, we have the Chetav, the covenant of life, and we also have a shortened form of the word Ruach, Ruach, which is spirit and breath. So now when we zip down to the word four, in Aramaic, this word just means four, but there's a lot that has been added in here that you would not see unless you know the language. And again, it's very difficult for me to teach some of these things because I've been in the language for five years now. So I see words within the words. And when you first start, you wouldn't. But it takes time in in order to develop these things. I didn't see them when I first started either. These are things that developed over time. As more light was entered in, more words were entered in within my being, allowing me to see more. So this is very much a word uh, in duality. And again, living in duality, there are always going to be two sides appearing. There's going to be the Mashiach ha and the anti-Mashiach ha, And then those who think they have the anointing, the opposite will appear true, vice versa, dependent upon the state of maturation you are in or are not in. And there's no shame or guilt attached to that, and I'm not judging anyone for where they are at, because spiritually I've been in my process of evolution as well, evolving, not devolving, as we all should be. So, all of Resh Bet, um, because Resh, okay, Resh Bet Ein, this is the root right here, Resh Bet Ein. What you are not seeing, first of all, we have the word Or, Aleph Resh, which is a shortened form of the word or, light. So this has to do with light. We see that what has been added is all of this on the front. Again, the Dalit has been added one more time the door. Yes, you can connect it to Yeshua because he said, even in the English scriptures, that I am the door. But he wasn't the only door. There were going to be many that would be coming as mothers in the earth. So again, in order to be four or quadrated or all-hearted, completely full-hearted, you must connect to mother first. In humility, teachability, go through the door that reveals your weakness. You can deliver yourself in becoming one with her. This brings forth light so that you can build yourself on the inside through light. This gives you the ability to see the power that is necessary that comes from within to deliver yourself from your fallen beast ego nature in the fallen flesh to raise you up and out of it so that you can be marked with the Father's covenant, his sine wave, signature frequency, fingerprint of the dark side, hidden esoteric side by entering in the way of light first. And that's what we have here, light first, to be able to show the darker teachings, which just means hidden or esoteric. 
and this is one who understands them completely, has been changed through the revealed, dark, hidden teachings becoming one with them, those who are serving others and not serving self. So what do we see in here? As all of Resh Bet, Arav means to lie in wait, he lay in wait, lurked, waylaid, to devastate, lying in wait, in ambush. So again, this is the system of duality, but there's many ways that you can actually look at this. The resolve always comes about in the letters, and I know you've heard me say that probably a bazillion times already. But the Olaf Rush bet, to lie in wait, he lie in wait. What do we have here? Uh, part of what we don't see, or within the word Rav, is that we have the Resh Bet, which means um, to much, much, many, large, great, mighty, abounding, abundant, honored, important, Lord and Chief, Master, Teacher, a bowman and an archer, the way of the arrow, the multitude, a great quantity of abundance and majority. So with the Olaf Resh Bet, we have the oneness that is lying in wait that has been waylaid, that has been ev devastated because we haven't grabbed a hold of the oneness principle yet. And so it's waiting for those of us to rise up into it, building ourselves, building our temple through the two paths of the 22 letters, because it's really about us becoming mighty and great, abounding in what we have done, which is producing light within us as honored and important but not as the not as the ego side as far as pride but because we start out in humility and teachability i also find it's interesting that bet ayin tav right here this word means to frighten and terrify and it's the same aramaic gematria as the word ayin bet tav different order which means was timid, anxious, anxious, frightened, terror, and phobia. So there's much, this is much being said here. The other thing that has been hidden in Gematria is Adar, which is also a, a Hebrew month, but it means splendor, magnificent, garment, and mantle, all within this word for, which is connected to the 144 as most of that, if you've seen my teaching on the 144,000, as far as the letters are concerned, it is right here. This is connected to the 144,000. And then we have the word time. Ein Tav means time. So we have the door to light, which is built on the inside in time. That is phenomenal. And again, when we look at the previous word about this crossing over and beyond as a meta ability or as a meta change, you can see that that is why the very first word in this verse had to do with transmuting, altering and changing. It's not at all what it seems like in the English. Birthing the new man the new humanity that has the gifts that have become wise, that are hedged in and covered and uncovered in the giftings that they've been given because they produced fruit. So again, now we have the quadration, like we were talking about, we have the quadration here that leads to Gimel or Regel, which is part of Gimel, but it has to do with the foot. And it's interesting to think about regalia, because really that's regalia, regalia, being adorned, right? But look at what this also means. It means to trot or to dismount. And we were talking about earlier about those who would be coming down. So we go up the mountain of mother and father in order to come down to be revealed. So Resh Gimel Lamed means foot, leg, but it also means a base, a step, a foot in measure, and a, uh, a measure in prosody. It is also that connected to time and a festival of pilgrimage. 
And I, I love this, I'm looking at Klein's etymology of the Hebrew language, that the phrase shalosh regalim means three steps, and it's exactly connected to the festivals of pilgrimage found in the Book of the Covenant that is intimately tied with the ancient Hebrew wedding about us going through that process of marrying the divine masculine and feminine within to return to Adam Kadmon, the one that was prior a vessel of light that is going to be crowned on the wedding day with light. It is so fascinating to see all of this. But, as in everything, it is also a system of duality. So on the positive side of this, going around as a completed mother that is on father's side again because the yod hey is now on the mother's or the father's side so the mother that is the completed father that has the power given to by the father as those who give the power means in direction as those who will be revealed that have been raised up from poor and destitute to be first fruit leaders that have gathered and assembled what they needed to through the instructions of light now they have the staff of authority and the power given by the Father, and they will be revealed as such. I also think that the Resh Gimel Lamed Yod, that this is pretty fascinating, because it talks about being a footman. How can you run with the horses unless you can be a footman? And because we have the system of duality that I was going to share before, it means that you can go around to slam, slander and calumniate to go about as a slander or as a spy, or he went about as an explorer. And for those of us who are in this process of maturation, that's exactly what we've been doing. We've been exploring this creation that we have been a part of, experiencing our own creation. So, as walking as a footman and a foot soldier, dismounting, this is even connecting us dismounting from horsemen as being horsemen as well as footmen walking about. Then, which would make sense because the previous word with four, four-footed, dismounting from four-footed creature beast into being walking a footman that are going about as an explorer. And if you've listened to any of our other teachings about the Sus, which is Semek Vav Semek, you know that actually the horse is a uh, metaphor for us becoming married, having the signet ring of mother and father that are connected, which then gives you the ability as being four, as a horse, having four footed, having the feet of mother and father walking about in power with the signet ring and the wedding bands. Next, we move to the creeping thing, insect and reptile. This one is really profound. So what do we have in here? Rechash is the root, and it means to creep and move. But it means to move. Now, now look at this. Look at this. In Hebrew, it means to move and be astir. It also means to creep and swarm. But look, to be moved and to feel. He moved his lips in a whisper, whispered, and uttered. It also is whisper, idea, thought, meditation, and prayer. So it's not just this, the creeping things. It is those that are moved, that feel. This is very much connected to our heart chakra. Now, look at all the vibrational frequencies of the words in here. We have Shin Het Resh. So an exact opposite order of the Resh Het Shin. And it means this is Shakar. So if you want to think of Ben Shakar, that's connected to a different teaching of Hillel. And I'm not going to go on that here, but you can find that on our, our uh, excavations at dawn. Shakar means to seek early, painstakingly to search diligently at dawn. He sought eagerly and inquired earnestly. And it means, so to rise early in the morning, to go out early in the morning, to seek, to turn toward. Also, dawn, daybreak, blackness preceding the dark, light or hope. Shedding light, 
enlightenment and elucidation, black, dark, hidden. So these are the things that even getting up early in the morning and seeking, painstakingly searching diligently, and that is what I think many people are waking up earlier, earlier in the morning, but my husband and I get up anywhere from two to three in the morning to search the sacred writings out so that we have light in our life or hope, Hebrew and Aramaic hope, which there's an expectancy with that, in shedding light and having enlightenment. So that is also contained within this word is those that are to be moved, that are moved, and who feel connected to thought, meditation, and prayer, which is what we do with the information that we are uncovering in our early morning searching. The other thing is it is, has the gematry of Chresh, Het Rashin, which means to cut in a grave and plow. He devised, he planned, to be silent. It also means to be dumb or be dear, an engraver, a cutter, an artificer, a magic art, the magician. Think of the tarot. And again, for those of you who are afraid or have been seeing these things as being evil, we've already dis discussed what evil is for those who bring harm and malintent who are the immature. The magician card is something that isn't what everybody thinks <laughs> that is in the negative. This is one that is that has skill. that has skill, and we were already discussing that in up here. Becoming wise, clever, and intelligent. So there's again much that has been hidden and we have been told to fear things that would really be setting us free. So I wanted to look up so that you guys can understand the etymology of magic. Um, think about the magi that came to you see Yeshua. Well, they were magicians. That is the plural form of magicians. We talk about magi, and we don't think twice of it because nobody questions it, as they brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh, which actually has to do with mother's teaching, father's teaching that makes us gold, spiritual alchemy. So um, we need to look at that very quickly and I've already got it pulled up so magic in its origin and and taking a look at this um, the art of influencing or predicting events and producing marvels using hi hidden natural forces okay that was from the 14th century also a supernatural art so thinking things that are in natural that are super supernatural the art of controlling the actions of spiritual or superhuman beings. We can see that. Sorcery, magic, totally get it. But I want you to look at this. <clears throat> From one of the members of the learned and priestly class. Now, I shared something recently, and I'm probably going to do a From the Heart on it. I posted on Facebook about explaining those that were of the priests that were to help provide answers for those who had questions that understood the codes in the Hebrew and the Aramaic languages. They were learned. They had the oral tradition of how to read the sacred writings. So that would also connect to those who can see the sacred writings. And it means from the root, mag which means to be able and have power. I want to show you a Hebrew word. To be able and have power. Yachol. So this could be connected to it. And this has the Yod, which is power, given to all to complete and whole, make them whole, the bride who wears the crown. <laughs> That's pretty fantastic right there. So again, want to clarify so that we can take the spooky out of things and see really what is going on 
in this. This also, when it talks about the magic art and magicians, this is the same word that is used to engrave the Ten Commandments. So, just connecting all of that, as this is meant to be about those who move and feel, those who move and feel in thought and meditation and prayer that have gone through the door, connecting to Mother, humility, teachability, going through the door that reveals to them what they are weak and feeble in so they can raise themselves up, finding life, Chava, the life that was pulled out of mankind, going through the consuming fire that cleanses us from our fallen beast ego nature so we can enter into the oneness principle. Then, okay, this is the last word. Finally, it's been a long teaching. This is why I didn't want to do it on live stream. It would be like a two-hour teaching. So when we discuss the word land, in Aramaic, it's araya, but it's without the aleph. It's aleph on the suffix. It's aleph resh ein. So the land of light that can be seen, because we have the aleph resh right there. The land of light that can be seen which is kind of funny because it's all been hidden at this point. And it's meant to be revealed only by going in through the door of Mother. Did you notice how many doors were on this? How many Dalits? The door of Mother to give us light so that we can see how to overcome our fallen flesh nature, tap into the fountain that is within us, the landscape of things to deliver from the fallen beast ego nature so that we can enter into the oneness unity. Now there's much, much, much more here. The Resh Ein Aleph in Aramaic, this word that is hidden within this and was written this way intentionally, means to tend, feed, and shepherd. I also saw it translated several other times as being a pastor, as in being a pastor of a church, because they are considered a shepherd. So they are to tend and to feed the sheep. But it also means to reconcile and appease. So these are peacemakers that will help reconcile differences. It also means to think, suppose, reason, and determine, consider, and be mindful, to decide, rule, and govern. So these are for the critical thinkers that are reasoning through and considering and being mindful in order to make decisions. This isn't people that react. These are those who respond. And these are those that are should be put in the position to rule and to govern because they have the instruction needed, because they delivered themselves of their weak and feeble position, entering in through light that raised them up. But in the system of duality, we also have in Hebrew, well first, the Aleph Resh Ein in Hebrew means to happen, it happened, occurred, and it took place. So this is going to happen, and it happened and took place already, and it's happening again because history repeats itself. But what we see in here in the system of duality is this word right here. This word means bad, worthless, evil, wicked, wickedness, harm, misfortune, and calamity. But it also has the opposite meaning, meaning friend, companion, associate, fellow man, means noise and shout, thought, purpose, and aim. So depending on where you are in the system of duality, if you are that of the immature and spiritual status, the 0 to 12 year old still working in mother's teaching, you may see that the earth is a place of adversity. It's a place of evil and wickedness, harm and misfortune and calamity. And when you are in the lower vibrations, that is true. But it is also the place that produces light through the adversity and the catalyst, the things that bring harm, misfortune, and calamity, and the suffering. Because really, the suffering happens from being in the poor and destitute position instead of raising ourselves up through light in order to become the uh, first fruits, as resh is, also means poor and destitute, but means top first first fruits, and leaders and heads as companions and friends associates, as shepherds that tend and feed the flock, that are the peacekeepers that are to rule and to govern, but they must enter into the door of mother to deliver themselves from their weak and feeble position. 
So really, when we look at this, it's the door to the light people. The shepherds, companions and friends, who will be seen as evil by some, because in the system of duality, especially the act of religion, anyone that is teaching of the oneness unity, anyone that is of the light in Hillel, is going to be seen as an adversarial component, because they are in the system of duality, and much of what is being shared is really not part of religion, because religion, the word religion, means to bind. And we were looking at the beginning of here about those who would be bound, if I can find the word here, all the way up here. To be bound. Come on, where are we? To bind by taking a pledge. So it's very interesting to think about that too, because when we pledge allegiance, we are also bound to that allegiance to the pledge that we made. So there's a lot being said here. There's a tremendous amount being said here that you can see that this whole thing is about changing and altering us and transmuting us. And this gives us exactly what we are to do to change and transmute us to be able to be part of the earth that is of light that we revealed as the teaching shepherds of light. And again, when we were looking up cutting up and the dealing with the plow and the fallow ground, if this is fertile soil, field and ground, these are those who have gone through that process and they sowed the seeds of light within the earth as they are those that are going to be revealed having the Mashiach anointing. So again, thank you for listening today. This was a very long teaching, but like I said, it would have been two hours if I would have done it on the live stream. So this one I decided to do this way, and I will do it through, um, and I will join with you, or I am joining with you while you're watching this right now as a premiere. So thank you for being a part of this today. If you have questions, I hope if I didn't answer them for you during the chat room, Please leave them in the comment section after this video is done and I will answer as best I can. Shalom, shalom, and namaste.